Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. We're going to finish up our 2016 GMC Terrain Denali, the one that's been totaled twice already. We're going to get it back out on the road, see if the third time's a charm. Let's get started. Well, look who shows up when the build's almost complete. We got our used taillight. Let's throw it in there. We'll plug it in, slide the little tabs into the quarter, push it in. We'll just put the bolts in and the little plastic caps. Now our urethane is dry on our back window, so now we can put our spoiler in there. Clip in the washer line and the third brake light, and snap it down into its tabs. Now we can bolt the spoiler in. Three nuts in the center, four screws on the outside. And we put this top trim piece on. Line up the tabs, snap them in, then line up the sides. So now we're going to do the advanced level wiper arm installation. You do it with the wipers in the delay mode. If you're looking for the expert level, try it on high. I'm too old and slow for the expert level. So we're just going to go with the beginner level. We have it in the right spot, so now we can put the nut on there, tighten it down, and we'll test the washer. It's always good to make sure you have those hooked up, because if you don't, since the lines run through the inside of the car, well, you could have a fountain in your car. It's not a bug, it's a feature, a water feature. So everything's good. We'll snap our cover on our wiper. Now we'll spend time cleaning what actually matters. Not just to calm down the clean freaks OCD. This part actually shows when the bumper's on and it's hard to get to, so we're gonna wipe it off. What is happening to me? So now that our housekeeping is done, we can set the bumper up there. We'll line up the tabs on the top for the grill, and then we'll clip the bumper on the side Use our bumper installation tool. Flip it in under the headlights. And now we're ready to run the bolts in across the top. Put our closeout panels in. Put our little plastic containers in there. And we'll put the closeout panel on the other side. That's right, it's still dirty under there. More plastic retainers. So these fenders are known for rusting out at the bottoms because of this little foam piece that's inside. Actually, it's kind of like carpeting. It's almost the same insulation they put underneath the carpeting. So we're gonna put a little cavity wax down there. That piece is just in there for sound deadening, in case you were wondering. That's why we're gonna leave it in there. So now we'll put our wheel liner up. It does have a little carpeting on the inside, where it belongs. Why couldn't you get that right on the trucks, GM? So we'll pop all our plastic clips in there. Put the liner underneath the bumper. Put a couple screws in the bottom. That actually holds that bottom balance in. Now we can put our wax in the bottom of this fender. What happens is the dirt collects in it, it rubs through the paint, it ends up with bare metal, and then the salt and dirt sits on there and starts rotting it out. Okay, let's meet in the middle, clean freaks. I'll brush off the leaves, but the dirt stays. Pop all the clips in there. Pop all the screws in. And now we're ready to put our moldings together. We had to take these off to paint it. So we'll pull the backing off the two-sided tape, toss it on the ground. And we'll bolt that molding in. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Fun fact, this is one part the last guy actually replaced. And they bought a brand new one from GM. And these things aren't cheap. They spent money in all the wrong places. Should have bought airbags instead. So we'll put the little piece on the bottom of the fender. Snap our retainers in there. 
And now we can put the driver's door molding on. It actually makes more sense to go from the back to the front, but I don't always do what makes sense. It just means you have to get the front end of each molding underneath the molding that's in front of it. Whereas if you start from the back, you just kind of put each molding up. Not a big deal. Snap molding in, we're good to go. So I was going to take this cam nut off so I could use it on the other one where GM doesn't put these on. But we got a bonus. This one actually has the cam nuts down here and here. They must have put it on after the last accident. I don't think it was to be nice to the alignment guy or to get a perfect alignment considering the rest of the work they did. It probably was so far out of alignment because who knows where they welded the bracket that holds this on was. They probably needed that just to compensate for it. So. We're going to pull our cam nut off of here and we'll throw it on our other one. So we'll loosen up the old nuts. We need an adjustable hammer to hold the bolt. I believe that was the metric one. Now we can spin our cam nut on there. Once it gets in between the slots, we'll hold that, and then we'll tighten up the bolt. Do the same thing on the other side. Have our adjustable hammer. I think that was the standard size one. Slide the cam nut up there. Spin it on as far as we can by hand and tighten the bolt down. If you don't understand how these work, there's two slots here, and because this hole is off-centered, as we rotate the nut, it moves the bolt in and out. And we'll change either the toe or the camber, depending on which one you move. So I've had a lot of people say that these engines on these four-cylinder terrains are junk. And they are known for stretch timing change, oil consumption, randomly grenading themselves, ticking noises. But all of that can be fixed with one simple trick that manufacturers don't want you to know. It's really simple. It does need to be repeated and it works on other vehicles. But for these, it's as simple as, get this, changing the oil. Yeah, right? Amazing. You have to change the oil on these and other vehicles. Hmm. But the manufacturer says it can go 20,000 miles with an oil change. Huh. Well, if you're still relying on other people to do your logical thinking for you, welcome to 2021. Life's gonna be hard for you. So, change oil over 5,000 miles or less on these, just like every other car on the planet, and uh, they'll last, no trouble. Let's do that. So we'll pull the drain plug out. Actually it came out pretty easy. And once our oil's drained, we'll throw our drain plug back in. Now I would tighten it down to 6,000 foot pounds and comment on how Jiffy Lube loves to do that, but I did offend a Jiffy Lube tech in the last video. So instead, we're just gonna strip it all out and forget to put the oil in like Jiffy Lube does. Feel better now, Mr. Offended Person? So we'll put the oil back in and we'll put our cap back on. Snap the molding into the front of the hood. Just line up the tabs, snaps in. And then there's a nut on each end. Time to get our brake job done. Got our hammer. It was worth the $25 a week for the rest of my life. Let's get the other ones done. Look at this guy, laying around, and he wants more money. So 
So now we can reassemble our rear bumper. I did get a used bumper. It had some damage on it, but there were enough pieces between the ones I had left on my bumper and this bumper to make a complete bumper. Ended up saving me a few hundred bucks. So it all snaps together, just like every other new bumper. Use our bumper assembly tool. Snap everything in. The two outer moldings go on first and then the center one. Now we'll put our reflectors in. They just snap in. Kind of a theme here. There's some little plastic retainers that also, get this, snap in. Oh look, a bolt, wow. A couple more plastic retainers and one more bolt. Now there's a couple brackets on the bottom that they chose to bolt in for some reason. So we'll run those in there. Now we can snap our parking sensors in and our styrofoam. Energy absorber, if you want the technical term. Now our bumper's ready to go up there. Slide it up, snap it into place. Use our bumper installation tool. Uh, see, the right side fell down because I didn't use the bumper installation tool correctly. So we'll reset the torque specs and use it again. And we can bolt in our bumper. With our 230 torques on the top and our Phillips on the bottom because why use the same bolt? That's too easy. Then we can slide the step pad in. It just snaps in. It's easier to do after the bumper's on the car. That's why I waited till now. We can snap all the plastic retainers and run the screws in our right rear wheel liner. Well, that's not right. Gotta go in a little bit but i think the best way to fix it is probably just cut the frame rail and extend the truck about an inch to line this bumper up with the exhaust definitely or maybe just bondo this so we have our gm approved expensive exhaust realignment ratchet strap installed and it's actually not GM approved. They want you to buy a new one for some ridiculous price. But we can straighten this one. So the exhaust is bent back from when the suspension came off and hit it. We're just gonna bend it back forward. Kind of pull it down a little bit because our strap is pulling it up. You gotta make the faces or it's not gonna line up. Release our strap, see how it looks. I did have another strap on the other side holding the rest of it in place so it wasn't pulling against the flex pipe. So the Bondo sponsorship didn't come through so I couldn't build it all out and then I feel like cutting the frame around. So it's all lined up now. So there you go. Cost me about five minutes worth of time instead of whatever GM wants for that. Now we can put our wheel liner in. I know I said I wasn't gonna clean it. I might have rinsed it off a little bit. We left it out because I wanted to be able to move that exhaust around without breaking our wheel liner or it getting in the way. Look at that, the wheel liner's installed and we didn't need any drywall screws like the last guy. Crazy. I'm going to put the retainers in the bottom of our bumper. So I screwed the brackets in with the two screws. Then the bracket is held in by one little plastic retainer. Hmm. Okay. So we have our new wheel to replace our other one that was scuffed up. The other part came straight from Scott's Terrain Emporium. So now we got some brand spanking new tires to throw on here. Because the other one had some mismatched tires and they were a little worn out. So we're going to throw a new set on. Now I don't have any special hammers for this. 
but there is another method that works pretty good. Went on a little easier than I was expecting. So our seat belts are back from the rebuilder. And you guys are always asking who rebuilds my seat belts? Well, my airbags came through and sponsored your boy. So I'll be happy to tell you, my airbags did them. Now, it's a super simple process. You just go to their website, you order what you need. This one, I just ordered the four seatbelt repair. They also do module resets and seatbelt webbing color change if you want to change the color. You order what you need, you print out a shipping label, you drop it off at any Dollar General, Walgreens, or any FedEx location, and they'll take it from there. Now they will give you updates once your order's placed of when they receive the package, when it's being repaired, and when it's ready for payment and to be shipped out. Once you pay for it, they ship it out. Now, once they get it, usually a 24 hour turnaround time is all it takes. Now mine was actually, they got it in the morning, repaired it, and it was ready to be shipped out that afternoon. So it was pretty quick. They come back looking just like brand new. The webbing is the same color and all their work is guaranteed. So if you're looking to rebuild a car and you wanna save some money instead of paying dealer prices for your pretensioners or a new module, have my airbags, rebuild your pretensioners and reset your module. Saves you quite a bit of money. My only complaint with my airbags, the bubble wrap doesn't pop. I guess it does. I have no complaints. So we can install our seat belts. We'll start with the retractor on the passenger side. The tab slides into the slot up on the top and then bolts into the bottom. Run it up the B pillar and we'll bolt it in. We're gonna use an old-fashioned ratchet because these adjusters like to break if you use an impact on them. Don't ask me how I know, but Scott's Terrain Emporium is running out of them. So we'll slide our upper trim panel in, make sure it's in the adjuster, that the adjuster is working. Then we run our bolt in there clip the bottom in, and pull the gasket out of the edge. Snap the little cap in there, and we'll put the lower trim in. Just line up the tabs, and we'll use our bumper insulation tool. I can't find the trim panel insulation tool. I keep losing tools. So now you can put the tensioner in. Plug it in, put it in place, and then bolt it in. There is a tab on the back, so you do have to make sure the tab lines up. It keeps it from rotating. I'm going to put the cover on the bottom, slide it into the tabs, then slide it forward, clips in. Put our seat down, make sure nothing's interfering, and we'll put our seat belt together. Little mother part goes in and slides up, then you run the bolt in. over to where it plugs in. Make sure we got everything in the right order and nothing's twisted. Looks good. We'll head over to the driver's side. Put our retractor in, bolt it in, run the belt up the B-pillar. There's a little clip in the center. There's a tab on the bottom that slides in on a plastic retainer. And then up to the top. Use our torque wrench. Click. Run the belt through. And slide the trim panel up there. And bolt it up. Plug in our tensioner. Line up that tab on the back and tighten it all the way up. Now we have our factory nameplate alignment tool. So we'll put our letters on. And we'll peel our alignment tool off. Save it for the other side. But since I don't like doing that, we're gonna finish putting our trim panels back together. I kinda mix the jobs I don't like doing in with the jobs that I don't mind. I don't like nameplates.
I'll put our license plate bracket on the front. I know. The internet hates these. I hate them too. If it were my own car, it wouldn't get one. So we have our factory license plate alignment tool. It's also pretty good for drilling holes. Be nice to have three hands here. Or if I had some quieter compressors, I could just use the pneumatic rivet gun. Now we're going to change our seat cover. This cover in the back pops off. There's two tabs on the bottom that you release, and there's one on the side. Once you have two sides off, you can just kind of pull it away from the other two sides and it unclips. That's what they look like. Now the seat cover just clips in all the way around. Just pop the little plastic tabs off. There are some elastic straps on the bottom that clip into the grating underneath. We'll just unclip those. Flip that piece back. Now you can find some more elastic straps. A couple little Christmas tree clips. Pop those out of there. And we'll flip our seat over, we'll pull the cushion out. The seat cover and the cushion, we're going to take them all out together. They're stuck together with Velcro. It's easier if you just take them all out together. But before we get them out, we need to take this piece off the back, plastic piece. The reason we need to do that so we can get to the headrest retainers. There's a couple little tabs in the back you have to squeeze and pull out. There's no good way to get those out without pinching your fingers. At least not one I've found yet. Probably the worst part about changing these seat covers. So it's ready to come off. Take everything out of there. And now we can change our side airbag. safety off the plug and then unsnap it. Yeah that looks safe in the pile. So now we have our new used one. Everyone says that used means it was deployed. No, it just means it was in a car and it's not brand new. Deployed means it was deployed. Now we can put the cushion in. Sometimes you put the seat cover on the cushion and then put it in. It doesn't really matter whatever I feel like doing at the time. This time I felt like putting the cushion in first. I can slide our seat cover underneath. Fold it up and start sticking it to our Velcro. Wait a minute. There's supposed to be an airbag over there. No, the airbag's on the other side. Insert confused mechanic noises here. Turns out I ordered the seat cover for the driver's side and they sent me the right one. The actual right one, not the correct one. So, say a couple bad words and continue waiting. It did take me about a week to get that one and it's probably gonna take me a week to get the next one. That's why there was a break in the videos. Builds don't always work out how you expect. So we'll do some more stuff since we ran out of parts. We'll put our sill plates in. I was feeling strong. I ate my Wheaties this morning so I'll throw this back seat in there. Got one from a junkyard to replace our old one. It was only a hundred dollars. 
wasn't worth trying to fix the other one or putting it in. Once it's in there, we just maneuver it around, drop it down into place, and we can bolt it in. Now we put our little closeout panel in there. little posts into the retainers, clip it in there, make sure it's stuck. All good. Now we're back to the other side. I put it off long enough and put our nameplates on. Toss out our nameplate alignment tool. OEM of course. Now this one actually is an OEM alignment tool. When you're rich and you buy new nameplates, you get this neat little styrofoam thing that the letters come in. Or if an insurance company's paying for it. So the shop I rent, they worked on a terrain at one time, and they saved me this little template. So I just retape my letters, stick them in the template, and put them on. I've reused this template, I don't know, probably about 30 times. So now we're going to change the cabin air filter, pull the glove box out, just as a retainer at the top you push off to the side, it folds down and then unsnaps. Then there's a little door with two clips, just push the clips up, open the door, and pull the filter out. Mmm, yummy. And we can throw our new filter in there. See. I do clean things when it matters. This definitely mattered. Snap our little cover closed and put our glove box back in. Slide the bottom tabs in and close it up. Mm, look at all the goodness in there. In the pile. So since we painted all this, I have to replace my tire pressure and VIN labels. So I called up ECS VIN. There's a link in the description down below if you need any labels. I've used them before. So just peel and stick. Make sure you clean wherever you're sticking them to first. I wiped it down with wax and grease remover just to make sure it's going to stick. We have our brand new seat cover here, and they actually cut this piece out, which goes around the airbag. Sometimes they tear, so yeah, that's why you don't just stitch up the old one like they did. Because the next time without this in there, who knows where the airbag's going. So, we'll put it back together the right way. Now we're going to line up our seat cover on our cushion. We'll line up all the Velcro on the back. Make sure we pull it tight over the cushion. Then we'll give our seat CPR. Make sure that all that Velcro is adhered. It's in the repair manual. And now we'll slide the cushion in. Yes, I did do this a totally different way than I started doing it the first time. I don't know why. So we'll slide our cushion over. Pull this little strap around the inside. And then we can pull the cushion around the outside edges. Get 
snap the strap together. There's a coat hanger that goes in here. It has to be run through the little slots in there. Just do a little on each side until it's all the way through. So when you get to the end, there's a couple holes that it'll come out of so that we can slide it into the plastic that we're going to put in next. And here's our plastic. Snap that into place. Just got a couple retaining tabs that grab onto the metal seat frame. Clip them all in. And now we start putting our seat cover on. Just clips in all that plastic. Line up the ends of our coat hanger. And then clip it in. And we'll put the seat cover around the outside edge. I'll clip in the bottom of the seat cover. And fold it back. Christmas trees to snap in there. We'll run our little elastic straps down underneath our grate. Clip them all in there. Fold the top over and clip those elastic straps in. Now we can put our headrest retainers in. Just line up the tabs, snap them in. There is a right and a left. The one with the side with the button goes on the right on both seats. All right, I put our little cargo net in. Just slides up and then clips in all the way around. And the seat's ready to go back in. Drop it in there. Lift it forward so the front slots line up. And we'll bolt it back in. Slide our headrest in. Make sure the tab's engaged and that it works. And now we're ready to clear out our codes. Check and make sure that all of them are history codes. Anything that's not a history code is a current problem. So if everything's a history code, should be good. Okay, everything's a history code except for this one and this one. And this is because the battery's disconnected. And this is the one that was never reset the last time. So. Let's clear out our codes. And that 184 code. See if everything goes away. That one just passed. That's why I thought it was a current code, but this time it was a history code. So sometimes the fancy tools don't do what you want them to do. So we got our little cheap guy. See if that one will clear our codes. And it did. Okay. We're all done. So I had a lot of people ask me if I had known all this damage was in there, would I have bought it? And the answer is absolutely. Even knowing now everything I had to go through, I'd buy this again in a heartbeat. Because everybody always asks me, what's my favorite build? And I don't really have an answer because I like all of them for different reasons. This one is definitely one of my top 10. When you're building cars and you've built as many as I have, yes, over a thousand, it gets a little boring sometimes. This one always kept me guessing. You kind of know what to expect from accidents, but you don't know what to expect from when somebody's been there before. Sorting out their mess was just as much fun as fixing the car. Now, everyone asked, how is it worth all this time to fix everything they did wrong? Honestly, had it not been hit before, the accident would have been all the same. Everything that was replaced this time would have had to be replaced, whether or not they had screwed it up. So it really didn't add much time other than maybe 
grinding out some of their nasty welds and making a video to laugh at ridiculous things that they did. Now there was a lot of cleanup work on this thing, which actually added more time than fixing their mess. There were little dents everywhere, scratches. That's why we ended up painting pretty much the whole truck. We didn't paint the roof. Everything else got painted. So we're back from our 500 mile plus test drive. If you get done building the car and won't immediately jump into it and drive four hours from home, you're not doing it right. It's exactly what I did. And everything is fine. So I'm gonna call this build done. But there's only one way to really be sure. It's time to play everyone's favorite game. So let's find out what's in my console. Ah. See why I say it's not totally done? There's those console pieces I was missing. I'll have to throw those on. What else is in here? Bolts. Oh. And Mr. Spotty. He's probably here for the credit. Well, sorry buddy. You don't show up for the build, you don't get any credit. What else is in here? Oh, looks like I have a trophy for my desk. A remembrance of what the last guys did and why my builds cost a little more. You get what you pay for. Oh, that's probably gonna help fill this up. Oh, I was running low anyway. What else is in here? It's awful big for this thing. Pretty sure I put that one on. I don't know what this goes to. I'll hang on to it in case we need it. That looks up. Oh, oh, there's one more thing in here. Looks like the pizza girl did bring us a pizza after all. Well, I think I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Yep, that's all that's in there.